we can do it! Yes, we can, and so can you. Join me as I take a little bit of a departure from the usual knitting and crocheting and tackle a DIY project complete with actual tools. Of course, I'll be covering my works in progress, my finished objects, and some magical memories, all on this episode of Doll Belly Knits. Welcome to Doll Belly Knits, the vlog devoted to knitting and crocheting and other crafty items with the highlight on using what you have on hand, reusing, recycling to make beautiful objects. Other places that you can find me on social media include Instagram and Ravelry and I'm on there as Doll Belly. And there's also a group for this vlog on Ravelry. If you search in the group tabs for Doll Belly Knits, you can find me and other viewers in the forums chatting it up. Um, right. My 80s hair continues. Um, not sure what I'm going to do about that. Next episode, it may actually be longer or it may all be gone. It just depends on how I feel. But this is what I was born with. This is all natural curls, so I'm just making use of what I got. Using what my mama gave me. Uh, Let's just get right into it. I'm going to go through some works in progress. I'm going to go through some finished objects. I'm going to talk a little bit about Christmas knitting and I will also cover some magical memories. So works in progress. These are all things that you've seen before. I haven't started anything new since the last uh, episode but still it's um, yeah making some progress kind of in the mode of wanting to get all the works in progress off the needles or done so that I can start new things, especially since I've already started Christmas knitting. First thing I will show you will be, oh, it's right here, I'll show you this. It is the wedding blanket that I'm working on. Um, it's a C2C, end to end. I call it a triangle blanket. Um, and I did um, show you this last time because I took it out of hibernation because the wedding is in the summer so it's summer I need to get on with it and I also talked about how I'm probably not going to be able to show you well I'm certainly not going to be able to show you the entire blanket um, and I was wondering how I would show you progress because it is so large when I make um, C2C blankets for weddings I tend to make them uh, fit to the size of like a queen size bed, double queen size bed. And the um, person that I'm making this blanket for is particularly tall. So I definitely want to make sure that it's going to be big enough to cover uh, him, his wife to be and whatever bed that they have in their home. Um, but I can show you uh, dog hair, apparently I can show you. Um, the progress that I've made so far, because um, if you've done an end-to-end -to -end -to blanket, it starts at the tip and it works its way out this way until you're happy with the width and then you start decreasing and coming back in. Essentially it's a square unless you start decreasing on one side and continue to increase on the other side, which I do do. Um, I like the rectangle. I like um, I like having a rectangle blanket, especially when your intention is to put it on a bed, because beds are rectangular in shape. Uh, but the nature of the C2C is to kind of go out until you are happy and then come back in. I do that for baby blankets, because baby blankets are not necessarily just used inside the crib. Um, they're you know strollers, car seats, that kind of thing. So if it's square, I don't, 
it doesn't bother me. Maybe this is just me. Maybe this is some OCD thing that I have that I want the blankets that go on the bed to be rectangular and the baby blankets can be square. That's okay. Um, in any case, I'm not even sure why I'm talking about this right now. Wow, just went off on a complete tangent. Okay, last time I showed you the blanket and I was here um, on the green and I wasn't done the green. So since last episode, I actually finished the ball of green. I went through the entire skein of this brownie green bit, which was, something something by Nicole it was a worsted weight acrylic yarn which again is what I use for these blankets as well especially baby blankets because you do want them to be washer and dryer friendly babies have a tendency to spit up and all other kinds of messes so that makes it good if you have a blanket that you're gonna put on a bed you're gonna to want to wash that too probably frequently so I use the acrylic but this was an acrylic that I had picked up Specifically for this blanket, I've never seen the brand before. I will definitely make sure that I put the name of this yarn in the show notes at the bottom of the screen. And additionally, you'll be able to find show notes in the Ravelry group for each episode. But I really like the yarn. I mean, it was an acrylic yarn, so I'm not sure what much you can say about it. But I don't know. I really liked it. It, it. it crocheted up real smooth. I felt like this game went by lickety split. So I just really liked it. And I think I if I could get my hands on more of that, I would. And then I started into the next ball. This is not the lime green. This is um, the in-between one because I had this multicolor one. I had like a sage. I had a brighter green. And then there's a really, really bright green. Um, those are in the other room, so I can't show you. But this um, green and the other two greens that I have, that's a Caron, 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 whatever, super soft, um, and it's really splitty. So I'm not enjoying this as much uh, in terms of the process of crocheting it, but I do like the way it feels. And obviously I like the colors. That's the other nice thing about acrylic. You can make it take you know, colors pretty brightly and get all different varieties and, and shapes and stuff. So shapes, listen to me, all different varieties of colors, everything you can imagine under the sun, like a rainbow. <laughs> anyway, this is where I am. I don't think I'm 50% done because I'm not ready to turn a corner yet. So we'll see and I don't have any more green yarn other than the remainder of this skein the Simply Soft and then two more of these and of course because it gets larger as you go until you decide you're gonna you know start decreasing you get less rows out of your skein because it's it's getting bigger as you go along so I don't have any more green after that. Um, I still need to go and dig and dive a little deeper into um, my stash. And when I say stash, because <laughs> um, this is another thing that has, you know, kind of come to my mind a little bit, that I don't stash, um, I don't stash as much as maybe everybody else does. I used to, but I don't anymore. Um, probably because things change um, as you grow older and uh, you start having a family, your um, expendable, expendable income gets devoted towards other things. So I don't necessarily have all the expendable income to just go and, and buy things willy nilly. Additionally, I didn't learn how to knit until I was in my 20s. So all the stashing that I had done up until that point in time was acrylic because that's what was most widely available to me um, in the States, uh, Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby. It's a lot of it's, if not all of it, is acrylic. Um, Red Heart Yarn was kind of 
kind of like the only thing out there uh, back in the day. Um, when I walked to school both ways, uphill in the snow, five miles, uh, it was just Red Heart yarn. So I actually still have a significant stash of the acrylic Red Heart yarn. And I've been trying to use it and whittle it down here and there. Obviously, um, making a C2C blanket is a great way to get rid of it because it does use up uh, quite a bit of yarn. I've also used it for um, the crochet and knitting classes that I've taught at my daughter's uh, school. So that was, you know, something there that I've used it for. And my children, I uh, teaching them how to crochet and knit. If they have a little project that they want to do, they just go into the garage and dig through the stash. But I think I've kind of exhausted my green at this point in time, and I did want to make this blanket all green as it is the recipient's favorite color. So I may have to get creative. I think I have a couple like maybe sport weight greens that are in there that I might maybe put two strands together. I don't know. Um, I said last episode that I needed to do that and you know full transparency I still need to do that it's been just a lot easier to just crochet with what I got and and worry about it later when I get to um, that point cross the bridge when I get there okay so that's the wedding blanket I am moving and shaking on that and it is a nice thing it's a nice um, crochet project because you don't have to really think about it. As a matter of fact, I think I've taken that blanket with me to the movie theater and watched a movie in, in the dark have, you know, was crocheting that because of the fact that I, you don't really have to pay attention. I've done it so many times that uh, I can do it in the dark. So um, that's a nice project for when that's how you feel, that you don't really want to be challenged, you want to switch your brain off a little bit, you just want to go through the motions and the process, the meditative portion of uh, crocheting um, that that can bring to you. Oh, I got a dog hair on my lip. Dog hair everywhere. I had no idea chihuahuas were gonna shed. No clue. She's a short haired chihuahua. I thought, oh, okay, no problem, short hair chihuahua, she's not going to shed, she sheds everywhere. Everywhere. And I should have known that it was going to be a problem, because she's white. And we once had a dog when I was a little girl, fluffy. She was white, and we had red carpets, so you think I would have known better, uh, but... I didn't. I saw her little puppy face and I had to have her. Right. <laughs> Apparently this episode is just going to be full of tangents that I go off on. So I will try to get it together and focus. We are still talking about works in progress. Uh, I've just showed you my uh, wedding blanket, the C2C and 2 n blanket. Now I will share with you my bird of fire. If I can find it. Yep, here it is. Okay. So you've seen this one lots of times. So I'll just quickly pull it out. Here we go. Oh, I've got both needles on. Front, back. This is the front. Bird of fire. Yes. So it is definitely getting long. It's not going to be any problem wrapping around the shoulders, that's for sure. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, into my 13th flame. Last time I had been into the 12th flame. So since last recording, I've done um, another, I finished the flame, I did a sky section, and I've started into the next flame. Additionally, I have discovered that there are only 17 flames. For some reason, I had it stuck in my head that there were 19 flames. So there's only 17, and I'm on number 13. So I am super close to being done. Um, after you're done the flames and the sky section, then you go along the um, edge and you pick up probably uh, what is a bazillion stitches to make a neckline, and that will add to the depth of the shawl 
and then it'll be time for blocking and finishing and wearing so that's really exciting it's it's been a nice project to work on it's um a little bit more challenging uh yeah than um the c2c blanket sometimes i gotta think about what i'm doing but it's not that difficult um that a beginner couldn't follow along so you have just a little bit of variation to make your mind work if you're in that particular um, mode or uh, thought process um yeah so i'm almost done that that'll be exciting can't wait to wear it I think I'm going to make hubby take me out some place special. Okay. So that's that. And those are, well, they're not my only works in progress, but they are currently um, two of three works in progress that I have going on. The next work in progress that I have is actually Christmas knitting. Okay. So I'm going to, I've decided to make this like a separate segment of the show um, so that um, I can warn people away and that they need to uh, turn away from the camera if they don't wish to spoil the surprise. So hubby, you need to do something else for the next few minutes and I have to remember to tell you that it's okay to come back to the camera or the, uh, to the computer or phone or whatever you're watching this on because I didn't do that last time <laughs> okay so for hubby for Christmas I am working on a Stephen West pair Stephen West pattern and it's called which has some significance uh, for me um, if you know me you'll get it um, but I made hubby a Stephen West um, string band cowl last Christmas and he was so fascinated with um, the design of it, how, how you wear it, the fact that it's a cowl that you can pull it over your head, you can wrap it around, turn it into a hat. Um, so not only did he like it for, you know, the fact that I made it, uh, the colors were colors that he likes, it was like a blue and a gray, but he really seemed to be into the architectural design of it. And those are, um, that is one of the things about Stephen West patterns that I like. They are architecturally interesting to look at, whether you do them in speckles and pops and um, choose you know really bright colors or if you choose to go with a more muted um, not basic uh, neutral uh, colors it still works it's still beautiful so I'm going with this color the yarn is oh I lost the ball band right oh yeah the yarn is by Red Heart. It's called Chic Sheep, and it's a worsted weight, um, a worsted weight blend of something. <laughs> I have so got my act together this episode. It's great. Where is it at? It's actually, no, it's 100% wool. There you go but it's merino wool, so it feels really, really nice, um, which is important to him. He likes things to feel nice up against his skin. Okay, let me find my progress keeper, because I did put a progress keeper on this um, since the last episode. So you can see. Okay, first off, obviously, it's really long. And um, it's not every row, but maybe every other row, um, you increase stitches. So it's only going to get longer as time goes on. Um, I have like 10 stitch markers on this thing, which is what the pattern calls for. Oh, yes. And the pattern, it's one pattern, but it offers two sizes by... Um, suggesting two different size needles and two different size yarns. So I'm making the larger version because I'm using a worsted weight yarn and I'm using a 4.5 millimeter um, 
the circular needle, although the pattern calls for a five, but I tend to um, be a loose knitter, so I think um, everything's gonna be okay. Fingers crossed. Right, where is it? It's in the middle, here it is. So, since we last met, um, went from here to, oh, it goes this way, here. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good for me, anyway. Um, the middle, stitch marker, little fruit grapes, that's cute. Um, yeah, so as you can see, it's got this design in it. I'm not trying to say too much because I don't want to give away too many details. And again, um, I will put uh, the link to this particular pattern and all the people and the places and everything that I talk about in the show notes. So if you want to go on Ravelry and take a look, um, you'll be able to see um, various different finished uh, projects of this um, in Ravelry so you can get an idea of what you may like to do if this is something that you're interested in. Okay. Christmas knitting is over. Hubby can look back at the camera. <laughs> okay, next up is finished objects. And the first finished object that I wanna talk about that I'm excited about, I can't show you uh, because I'm sitting on it. <laughs> um, recently, I reupholstered a dining room chair. And I will put in pictures of before and after and, and some of the process as well as I talk about it. Full disclosure, I have done this one time before. Um, we have a uh, dining room set um, that we put together. No, we didn't put it together. What happened was we bought the table without any chairs because the table was beautiful, but they didn't have any chairs to go with it for whatever reason. I don't remember why. Again, because they didn't have any chairs to go with it, it was a very good price as well. So we thought, we'll just get the table and we'll worry about the chairs at another time. So that's what we did. And then like, flash forward like maybe five years, <laughs> we had this table and we didn't have any matching chairs. Um, and I was with my mom at a thrift store. I don't remember the name of the store. It wasn't like, um, it wasn't like a Salvation Army, it wasn't uh, anything like that, but it was a thrift store that's in her area, that's where we were. And I saw these, it was only five chairs. It was two end chairs, the ones with the arms, and then it was three uh, side chairs, I guess, without the arms. And I didn't care for the pattern on the cushion, but I really liked the wood um, and the wicker on the back of the chair because it really matched our table in color and even kind of like design with the little curly cues and stuff like that. Um, also, the chairs still had the plastic on them. So um, God bless, you know, South Philly Italian grandmas who cover everything in plastic. This woman might have been, or man, whoever owned these, I don't, whatever. Yeah. They were still covered in plastic, and so the chairs were in fabulous condition. And because it was a thrift store, and you know, we, I ended up getting all five chairs for like $25. So at the time, I knew that I would probably try and recover the cushions on the chair because I didn't really care for the pattern. But you know, life gets in the way, and flash forward like, another four years <laughs> and now because um, I don't keep plastic on stuff I rip stuff off I want to use it I'm very practical I want to use if I can't use it then it, I don't really want it um, it's great if it looks pretty on top of it but I'm I want to use it I'm definitely function over or yeah function over form so the chairs have gotten some wear and tear um, and you'll see in the picture that this particular chair I let go a little too long and it's really really bad um, I had recovered the one to give it a go um, and then I was like oh yeah I did it and kind of let the rest of them go 
and I did let them go too long. So I finally got it together and um, I reupholstered this chair. So uh, what I used, I had already bought the fabric. Uh, I had watched a YouTube video like everybody else. You can learn everything on YouTube. You need about a yard uh, or a meter of fabric for each cushion, each chair that you're going to um, redo because you have to cover the top but you, you wrap it around as well so you need um, a little bit extra. So you would need about a meter or a yard of fabric for each chair that you're going to reupholster. You're going to also need a staple gun with the correct size staples. <laughs> the first time I did the chair I didn't have the correct size, correct size staples. They went inside the gun and the gun operated, but it obviously wasn't the correct size because two staples were coming out each time that I stapled um, the chair. And it actually made, it's probably why I didn't go back and do the process again, because it was uh, a little difficult to work with the staple gun because it <laughs> was kind of only working correctly. Um, but it's, it's labor intensive too, you know, you're actually using tools and uh, <laughs> standing over something and yeah, Arr, tools. Uh, wow, totally rambling. I might have to cut that part out. I'm not sure. I feel like I'm just going to go with the flow because I feel like this is definitely going to be like a keep it real episode. It's the real behind the real. Hmm. Right, okay, so staple, you need your cloth, you need your staple gun, you need um, a screwdriver, whether it's a Phillips or a flathead will depend on what screws are inside the um, chairs that you have. I also used, um, I used a kitchen knife, uh, like a little steak knife um, to help pry up some of the staples, and I used a um, staple remover to actually, just a household staple remover to pull the staples out of the, out of the um, existing cushion cover. And I did have like a soft um, mallet or a hammer to bang in a couple of the staples that didn't necessarily go through all the fabric. Okay, so like super easy process. Um, like I said, you can probably find a video on YouTube. Um, I did watch a video on YouTube and if I can find that one, I will put it in with the show notes. But you take your take your chair, turn it upside down on another table, and look, and you'll see like four screws in the bottom. Undo those screws, and then the cushion will come right off. If you have a chair that's still relatively intact, there may be a lining um, that is on top of the bottom of the cushion. If you can gently and you know remove that to keep that intact, that would be good because it'll cover up the raw edges of your um, cushion seat when as you reupholster it. So I carefully removed the uh, brown, it's like a gauzy fabric, and then I just took out all the staples. Um, actually, no, I took out the staples to remove the backing. And then what I did was I just took my fabric and stapled it on top of what was already there. Because as you can see, the chair was completely falling apart. So I wasn't going to be messing with that uh, cushion. I just covered right on top of it. Um, staple all the way around. Start at your north and south and east and west points and then go around. Um, I didn't really do anything special with the corners. I just tried to pull it tight and tuck it in a little bit. Um, kind of like wrapping a present and then you know stapled when I was done stapling I cut off some of the excess then I stapled that uh, gauze fabric back into place and then I just screwed it back in to the chair so um, it was really easy it took me like an hour it may have taken less this time because it was the second time I had done it but then um, that's it and it's done and you got a nice new cover because um, the cushion, if the cushion of the chair is still good, then it's worth salvaging and the cushions were still good, are still good. It's just that the fabric of the cushion is literally falling apart, probably because of age and because of wear and tear with the kids, you know, sliding in and out and wiggling around and 
um, and we use this table every day several times a day so yeah that was pretty exciting I felt um, pretty proud of myself because it's like you know real there were tools involved there you know I had a can of beer yeah it was like mmm I can do anything I can take on the world one dining room chair at a time <laughs> so I would encourage you if that's something that you got going on in your life you have a set of chairs um, uh, dining room chairs kitchen chairs whatever and they're kind of looking raggedy and starting to maybe come apart a little bit in some places um, it's not that expensive to get some you know a couple yards of fabric and just give it a go worst case scenario is uh, actually I can't even think of a worst case scenario because you're basically just stapling fabric together uh, I can't really think of how that could be messed up I really can't but if it is you just take the staples out and put the chair back together to the way that it was originally no harm no foul you can put the chair back together um, it's gonna be okay and if you're down one chair for the evening because you couldn't finish the project all in one go I'm sure you guys step stool or something else that somebody can sit on for the night don't don't overthink it just go ahead and do it <laughs> um, okay other finished object that I have to show is <coughs> excuse me it's my bottle cap coasters um, I showed these last week actually I showed um, it was the first time I had shown it even though this is like episode 12 or 13 whatever so these are coasters that are used for um, like hot drinks uh, you could also put several of them together um, and use it as a trivet on the table because I am recycling and reusing um, beer caps or soda caps um, and I'm covering them in a crochet I'm crocheting over top of them with like a cotton thread it's like a size 3 um, thread so that way they are uh, heat resistant heat absorbent whatever um, it won't melt on you and then it's got a little bit of some height so your object whatever the hot object is is up off the table additionally if it's a cold glass the cotton will absorb any um, perspiration that the glass does if it happens to be warm weather so I like these and this is um, an item that I have in the Etsy shop it's actually my only item uh, <laughs> and it wasn't finished even though I had put it up there um, I think my plan was that if somebody actually ordered it and wanted it I would be able to sit down and frantically finish the bottle caps and send it out in the mail um, in a day or two I am curious to know if any other Etsy sellers work that way as well uh, if you do or you have some kind of process uh, of your own that might not be uh, where you you know you finish the object and then you put it up that you're putting it up and maybe not completely finished I would love to hear from you and and uh, hear some of your stories so please feel free to comment uh, in the comment section below of this video uh, this is a relatively new thing for me so I'm still learning as I go um, uh, Etsy uh, being an Etsy seller so I, I would also appreciate any feedback or uh, comments that you have um, about that as well. Right, so set of four available, ready to ship. Okay, now we come to the part of the show that I like to call Magical Memories. And um, in the vein of being transparent and keeping it real, I am here to tell you that life is not always magical. <laughs> Everyday life is not always magical. And um, of course, every moment that I get to spend with my children, every moment that I get to spend with my husband, my friends, my extended family, of course, that's all magical and precious. 
Uh, you want to live in the moment and enjoy what you have, why you have it, of course. In regards to this show and having magical memories that relate to some woolly adventure, no, it's not going to happen every week. I'm not going to go to the Shetland Islands every week. I'm not going to go to, you know, some knitting and stitching show. Uh, but I do what I can for you guys. And what I have for you this week is pictures of animals. <laughs> Over this past week, I went with my youngest and her primary school to a local wildlife park. I got the pleasure and joy of being a chaperone for, you know, well, I had a small group of five children that I was responsible for, but probably about 50 kids went on the trip. So you know what that means. Uh, it was a bus ride for like an hour and 40 minutes with about 50 screaming seven to 12 year olds. Uh, so what I did in order to pass the time and keep myself sane was I did bring a project to work on and it happened to be the bottle cap uh, coaster project. Um, I brought that one because I had a nice little bag to put it in. It was small um, and I do it piece by piece, um, obviously piece by piece, cap by cap. So. It was something that I could work on and um, put down if I needed to tell somebody to stop pulling somebody's hair or throwing a water bottle or whatever other ridiculousness was happening on the bus. It was, I thought, particularly funny though because I didn't bring a pair of scissors. Uh, didn't think that that was a good environment to bring a pair of scissors into. And in order to keep working and making additional bottle caps, I had to finish off the bottle cap but continue to work with the string as it was attached to the bottle cap. So I will insert a picture of the bottle cap sausages that I ended up with um, as I was going along. But you know how that is. I'm sure you have been on a plane, a train, or a bus, um, or an airplane, and there's people that are talking very loud and or maybe you're just not um, a comfortable traveler so you bring a nice project and you go into the zone and that's what I did I went into the zone I crocheted my bottle caps and I made it I made it I'm here I'm alive <laughs> and you know we had a good time we saw lots of animals um, yeah so magical memories are magical but maybe not always Mm, I always want to use the word magnanimous because it starts with an M, but I know that that's not correct. Uh, yeah. Okay. Everyday life can be magical too. You don't always have to go to a festival or some other faraway land to have magical memories. You can make them right in your own backyard. And as I do with the end of every episode, until we meet again next time, I do hope that you have some happy knitting. I hope that you are well and that you stay well and that you get out there and you make some magical memories of your own. So until next time, see you later guys. Bye. This hair though, tell you what, Whitney Houston hair. Mm, I want to dance with somebody. I want to feel the heat. <laughs> Ridiculousness. <laughs>